Hey, this is Mark at Rebuild Mark. Time for a little update. I've made some progress getting ready for Unbound Gravel 200. Maybe I should make more progress. But I have momentum, and I'm excited about it. I did have to make a very large attitude adjustment this week, and I did so successfully. Historically, I do not like riding stationary trainers. In fact, I'd rather staple my eyelids to a 2x4 than sit on a stationary trainer. But the weather here on the front range is just not cooperating. So, Elite was kind enough to let us use a very nice smart trainer. I got it set up. I set up a Zwift account. I have now ridden on that five times. And I will admit, it's not as bad as it used to be. It's a great tool. And I'm pretty excited that I've got three rides in the last three days. Even if they're not long, I'm stacking up some time. That's something that Kristen Legan told me to do. I spoke with her. She's a, a well-known gravel coach with Rambler Coaching. Yuri Hoswald said the same thing in the interview you may want to go listen to on Slow Guy on the Fast Rides podcast. Stack that time up. Get the time on the saddle. The trainer's letting me do that, so I'm pretty excited about that. We've talked a couple of times about saddles. I've been riding this Selly Italia gel flight gravel saddle thing. I rode flights for a long time. I think this is a good saddle, but I do think my position's a lot different. Back in the day when I rode that saddle, it was big gear all day, all the time, leaned over, mashing it. It worked really well for that. Now, uh, I'm not going fast. I'm going very slow. I'm sitting much more upright, so there's a lot more pressure on the saddle. I'm going to try something a little wider that's specifically made for that style of riding. It's a Physique Terra Argo X3. I should have it on the bike this week. I'm hoping that makes me a little more comfortable in the saddle, but more than that, gives me a little more stability, uh, stability in an upright position, and that might help the neck problem I've been having. We haven't talked a ton about nutrition, but years ago, I was inspired by Scratch Labs and the idea of eating more real food on a ride. I'm going to stick with Scratch Labs products, uh, particularly for hydration, and I'm going to stick with that tried and true recipe of the rice cakes with bacon in them. Uh, instead of a bunch of gels, I tried eating a gel recently on a ride and it didn't really pan out for me. I don't get along well with maltodextrin, which inhabits a lot of those gels. So I'm going to stick with Scratch Labs for hydration. I'm going to stick with real food as much as I can. I don't think in an event like Unbound that it's a problem if I stop every 45 minutes or an hour for three minutes and eat something that's real. And I think that'll help me uh, maintain that nutrition uh, on a regular schedule throughout the whole event and hopefully give me the energy to finish. I really enjoyed the electronic shifting. This SRAM Explorer Force Group has been a lot of fun. I mentioned uh, batteries and being sure I changed the batteries out, and I got a cool comment about an app. Now, I'm sure everybody else knew there was an app, and I'm sure I would have figured it out, but I didn't know there was an app for that, so I went and downloaded the app. Turns out the commenter was correct. It shows you the batteries in the shifter and the battery on any of the derailers, but it also lets you do micro-adjusting of the shifting. You can even do it on the fly without the app. I didn't know you could press the little uh, sync button and then move the shifter. I love the intricacies and the gadgets and the gadgets. So I had a ball with that. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's fun to be able to manipulate a drivetrain to get it to do pretty much whatever you want. Everybody probably knew that, but I didn't. So that's something I learned this week and I love learning new stuff. I mentioned that one of the things I've got to learn is just, it's not only different since the last time I rode bikes a lot, it's just different because gravel's different, is how to carry a bunch of stuff. So a top two bag has been something I've been looking into and I found one. This is the Revel 8 Mag Tank. It's got the mounts because I've got the little bosses here. So I'm going to mount this guy to the top tube. It's got a little stabilizer strap on the front to make sure it doesn't wobble around. But the reason I bought this one beyond Revelate having a great reputation for making stuff is this little magnetic closure because I can just flip it open and it seems like it'll stay open and then I can flip it back. So this will be where uh, the commonly used pieces go, maybe some food, um, different things like that that I want to access while I'm riding. So I'm excited to try that out. And I did buy that. Um, I think it's a great piece of gear. And if I like it, I'll let you know here shortly because I'm going to use it this weekend. we got some good weather coming here on the Front Range in Colorado. So I'll be out opening a bag and taking things out and putting stuff back in it and casually flipping it closed. I've talked a couple times about tires being a, a, an important decision to make. And while I was talking with Kristen Legan, I asked her about her favorite tires. She had two, one of which happened to be Terravail Cannonball tires, which are on my bike. So that gave me some confidence in the tire that I really already liked anyway. So I may stick with that. 
They've got a couple of different versions, one that's supposed to be super supple and one that's a little less supple but more durable. I don't really know which one of these that is. I'm going to figure it out, but they also make a tan sidewall, which I happen to think is stylish, so I may try that. I've gotten a few questions about heart rate and power meters and which are of those am I using or both. Uh, I don't have a power meter. I do have a heart rate monitor and I wear it because heart rate is the measure of the work that has happened. And I do need to spend some time on easy efforts, but at my weight and lack of fitness, it's really hard to go easy, especially when there's hills involved. So I've been exploring that and trying to get some easier rides in, but part of my attitude readjustment and coming into the stationary trainer world is two things are helpful. One is I can actually go easy when I want to go easy, but also the smart trainer's got a power meter in it. So I do get to look at the relationship between power, which is the work I'm doing, and my heart rate, which is the result of that work. And I think those two things are pretty helpful. I've said a bunch of times I'm not much of a structured training guy, so really it's a loose guideline on days when I just don't need to go that hard. I just need to get some easy miles in. Some persons named Dan have commented that my gravel bike has gotten dirty and stayed dirty, but that just means I'm riding it. And a lot of things in life I'm pretty particular about, and it used to be that I'd keep my bike perfectly clean, but I haven't kept the gravel bike perfectly clean. And frankly, it makes me feel good that there's dirt on the bike. But I'll probably wash it this weekend and make it look pretty and get the chain lubed up. I did, I did tell you guys an important thing about a bike people neglect is the chain. And I have done exactly that and neglected my chain. But it's not squeaking yet. I'll get my maintenance done. But look, it's dirty. Hey, if you've got any tips for me, maybe you've been doing this gravel thing for a long time. Leave me some comments. Do you have good ideas about storage or tire choices or what it's like to ride 200 miles. I've never done that. Let me know in the comments. You can follow along on slowguyonthefastride.com or Instagram at slowguyonthefastride. And you can follow me at uphillstill on Instagram.